Have you seen kitchen countertops this color before? I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe what they used to look like. They were old, tan, dirty tile countertops. And in this video, we're gonna show you how we coated them with stone coat epoxy. This kitchen was about double the size of a normal kitchen and had two raised bar tops. So we had to split up our pores, which isn't always normal. So later on in this video, I'll explain all the steps to make sure we get this job done right. I had a blast working with some amazing epoxy pros on this job, RK3 and KCDC Design did fantastic work bringing their knowledge and Rhonda pulled a beautiful design out of her back pocket. With that, we full scent on our tropical inspired kitchen. For this project, we're using Stone Coat's Art Coat. This house has loads of windows in it and over time, UV rays can change the color of an epoxy countertop to an unappealing amber hue. That's why we're using Art Coat. It has extreme UV resistance and durability to guarantee our customers will be thrilled with this outcome for years to come. Right now, what we're doing here is pouring out a dirty pour. A dirty pour is when you combine all your mixed colors of epoxy into a single bucket and watch the magic happens as it spreads across the surface. Once it all lays out, we'll get ready for the next step. If you haven't noticed, we're knee deep into this renovation and we have been prepping this kitchen for a couple days. To catch up, check out part one of this tile kitchen remodel where I cover every little detail, how to prep tile or any slick surface for epoxy. I even share how we overcame an unforeseen issue and ended up setting ourselves up for success. Trust me, it's worth watching. It was a bumpy ride, but all smooth that earns a groove. After a thorough cleaning, bonding primer, and a concrete overlay, we got the counters leveled and joints hidden. A nice thick rock face edge polished out that look, paint and a green seal coat to cure overnight, and today is the day to color the world. Get ready for some seriously stunning designs. We're using amazing color additives from RK3 and Stone Coat to create the perfect palette. From blues and greens that tie perfectly with the earthy floor and cabinets, to metallic powders that add an extra dose of glamour, we're creating something truly special. Check out the links in the description to get started on your own masterpiece. Did you know that the different types of epoxy color additives have their own competition? They fight for first place and create a one-of-a-kind natural or exotic stone look. It's like watching the Olympics of DIY. You could easily pay 75 to 100 bucks a square foot for exotic granite, but we save big time by using seven gallons of epoxy, costing just under 10 bucks a square foot. Here's the first coat so you could see the colors up close. Uh, it's so gorgeous, and wow. I love the green gold in with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Great yeah. color scheme. Yeah. Wow. And look, it's and gonna it fit right like in the house. There's a navy blue. Well, that's Excuse the translucent dark turquoise. Perfect. Are you happy? Oh, this is so gorgeous, God. All right, so far so good. The customers are loving it. And next up, Rhonda is gonna take our copper metallic and add accent veins all over this project to tie it all together. Once we're done adding colors, we'll mist it with 91% isopropyl alcohol, and that's gonna add some cool effects. We'll let that dissipate, and then we'll remove any remaining bubbles with heat. As you can see, we tape the perimeter of these counters since we're using so much epoxy. We want that to gel up a bit before peeling it off so those beefy edges get coated perfectly. If we were doing the melded marble look and not the dirty pour, we wouldn't have needed to tape off those edges. This customer chose not to DIY this project. It would have cost around two grand for all the supplies since it was such a big kitchen, but replacing with new granite tile countertops and tearing out the old ones would have cost a whopping minimum of 7,000 for the entire job, including demo and installation. Even though our epoxy renovation had dry times to wait for, our customers saved thousands while getting a unique long-lasting countertop that made their kitchen look like an art museum. Meanwhile, we made some good money on labor. It was definitely a win-win situation. All right, it's been over an hour since we've mixed up the resin. We're gonna peel this tape dam first. We're gonna peel this about five to 10 minutes early. Let some of that epoxy start flowing this way. Why? Because our bar top is a hair out of level. Each step we've applied to this bar top has helped bring it back, but it's just subtly down. So our dam is a little heavier on that side. So we're gonna open this side, let it flow, wait about 10 minutes and remove the rest of the dam. Then we're gonna dress our edges, rub them out, make sure there's a nice good coating. And then the epoxy is gonna self level over for the next few hours, coating those edges, bring in our color technique right over. And this countertop is gonna look like a thick piece of exotic stone. I can't wait to pull this tape down. Don't blink, it's happening right now. 
And for those of you who do not know what to charge for labor when doing epoxy countertops for a living, it changes from region to region. But what we typically teach people is to check your local price for cookie cutter laminate, which is typically about 45 bucks a square foot. Use that as your baseline when you're getting started. Once you get more adept and start making higher end finishes, you can easily charge 60 to $90 a square foot. My recommendation would be to join our insiders group on Facebook. You can ask your peers who are into this as a business Business, what they generally charge. You can also join us out in Texas for the RK3 hands-on training classes where you'll learn the most recreatable epoxy finishes for countertops, showers, and even floors. Moreover, you're also going to learn the ins and outs of starting and maintaining your epoxy business. Anyways, back to the project. We'll let this coat set up for an hour or so, and now we're just peeling off our tape dams. You'll notice the epoxy is just shy of the edge, so we're going to take our fingers and we're gonna help promote that epoxy to flow over the edges. Remember, epoxy wants to go where epoxy's been. So use your hands to coat any dry areas and watch that design start to flow wonderfully down your edges. We'll spend some time rubbing the bottom edges of those tops, waiting for them to stop dripping. Notice how we masked off the lower countertops. We did that because we didn't want the drips getting onto our lower design once we started pouring. In a perfect world, we pour it all at once using some type of gutter system, however, the Supplies were far and few between where we were working, so we had to make do with what we had, but no worries, this is a great way to ensure we still have a flawless finish. All right, let's go to work. First things first, we gotta clear off those bottom counters. Then, we're gonna slap on another set of tape dams so we can mix up a new batch of art coat using those same sick color scheme. But wait, here's a pro tip. Because we pour all the colors back into the same bucket randomly, it's tough to make each batch look exactly alike. Trust me, I've tried. To make our different tops look similar, let's use the same ratio of each color in this batch. Big old buckets of the main colors and smaller ones of the accent. With this trick, no matter how we pour it out, we'll be crushing that same look as we did on our very first pour. And for making it this far into the video, drop a comment below starting out with, hey Mitch, I'll make sure to answer your questions personally. We really strive not to only entertain you guys, but mainly we attempt to inspire you and give you the tips and tools you need to use epoxy with confidence. Trust me, I fully understand how intimidating it can be going into your own kitchen or bathroom for the first time, and the thought of messing up holds back a lot of people. But that's exactly why we do these videos and push the limit on what we can or cannot do to make those mistakes so you don't have to. So with that said, I have two pro tips for you, and hopefully this will build a little bit of confidence. First, utilize the resources. We have nearly 700 videos here on YouTube alone, and that's not even including all the written instructions we have on our website for those of you who learn differently. So make sure you take the time to understand what prep steps are involved depending on your surface, and also the different techniques that are called for when doing a certain design. Second, and I say this one all the time folks, practice. Even doing a single sample board will exponentially increase your understanding of how the epoxy works. Imagine Imagine this, a first time epoxy user feeling nervous and uncertain steps into a hands-on epoxy training class. They follow our guidance, fully trusting the process and moments later, the light bulb turns on. Excitement spreads across their face as they witness their beautiful creation take shape before their very own eyes. As epoxy teachers, we live for these wow moments that leaves the students feeling accomplished and confident even beyond the classroom. With practice on sample boards, you too can achieve these results and join the ranks of seasoned professionals. Trust me folks, the rewards are worth it. Before we got started, Rhonda did the exact same thing with a couple of sample boards to get this recipe locked in, which really set ourselves up for success because it took out all the guesswork out of the design and we were able just to do our jobs and get the epoxy on the surface. Just like any job you do, always follow the five Ps. Do you know what they are? Let me know in the comments below. After pouring, we waited a bit like the first round before pulling off the tape dams. Then we coated the edges with our hands and walked away. We're gonna let our color coat cure over night and then we're ready for the final step applying our matte ultimate top coat before that we're going to deep prep the kitchen and get this place all cleaned up if you watched part one you know this is the same time we'll check for any leaks and potential problematic areas and if you want to learn how to deal with a little epoxy getting behind your masking be sure to check out part one don't worry we did a great job masking this time so the cleanup was easy peasy I want to give a quick shout out to Brett Cunningham and RK3 Designs Insider. 
He does a tile overlays all the time professionally out in Wisconsin. He gave us some amazing tips and tricks that got Luke headed in the right direction as we were flying over from the mainland. Thanks, Brett. Keep up the good work, bro. You got this. We're back. It's the next day and the final step. To prep for the ultimate top coat, we're going to smooth out any stubborn drips that showed up after we left for the night. We're going to use 220 on a sanding block and quickly sand down those drips. We're also going to use a maroon scotch bright on the edges as well as the surface to give it a light scuff sand before applying the ultimate top coat. After lightly sanding the surface and the edges, I'm going to use 91% isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels to clean off any sanding dust and debris. The steps of the ultimate top coat are simple. Come back after the epoxy is cured, lightly sand the surface, clean off the dust, and then we're going to roll on the top coat, let it dry two days, and the countertops are ready to use. Click the link in the description below. That's going to take you to RK3 Designs with very helpful step-by-step -step instructions on how to properly mix and apply the ultimate top coat. I've got to give a massive shout out to the homeowner extraordinaire, Dana. Despite us turning her kitchen upside down for a few days, she's been nothing but amazing to us. And listen up folks, because there's more to Dana than meets the eye. She's a well-established executive leader coach and acclaimed author, and she's got some fantastic tips that are going to take your biz to the next level, whether you're a solo operator or running a team of 200. So be sure to check her out on Instagram at Dana.Mahina and give her new social media platform kinder a follow as well it's a safe space online without any of the typical negativity that can get so depressing on all those other social media platforms cheers to my new family and friend dana thanks for being such an amazing customer and host you got this and never forget people in your life at work at home in community they follow what you do not what you say leadership is an action not a title or a position and that is being kinder stone coats ultimate top coat is a perfect final touch to our amazing epoxy countertop system you can choose from beautiful matte or glossy finish. By the way, have you checked out Rhonda's secret formula for the ultimate top coat? To use it, first mix and shake part A, then mix the top coat at a two to one ratio. Rhonda's formula figured out the perfect amount of water to add. Just multiply the ounces you mixed by 0.19 to determine how much water to add. Mix it all together for about one minute, then pour the ultimate top coat into a paint pan. Use a quarter inch microfiber roller to apply it uniformly. After that, switch to a dry roller and apply light pressure to remove excess material, leaving behind a beautifully coated countertop. The final step is super durable, crystal clear with realistic natural stone look that's sure to impress. Like I said before with the epoxy coating, it's important to practice before applying the ultimate top coat over your finished countertops. Before you go and install a kitchen in a customer's home, be sure to show them what the glossy and matte version of the ultimate top coat looks like and be sure you've installed that over a large size realistic countertop like let's say like an island. The ultimate top coat application is a skill in itself just like the epoxy countertop pouring is. So practice makes perfect. And guys, I hope you learned a few skills, tips or tricks that are gonna get you headed down coating over your old countertop surfaces with epoxy. That's what we strive to do here at Stone Coat Countertops. Not only do we cover countertops, but showers, floors, tabletops, and more from all of us here at Stone Coat Epoxy. Don't forget, you got this, and we're gonna see you on the next video. What did y'all think when you first showed up? What did I think when we first yeah. showed up? Yeah. Like when you walked in the door, what was your first impression of the kitchen? I was like, wow, this is gonna be a lot. Right. No, honestly, what I thought is green. The colors that I brought is going to overpower this kitchen. Mm. But because it's so open and there's so many windows right. and the scenery is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think we could have picked a better color than this. Right, and that's important too, because that's a, if you have low light and low windows, not a lot of sunlight coming in, you make real dark countertops, it can darken the whole kitchen. Right. So that's a, that's a good concern to have, and that's part of the struggle a lot of people have was, is picking the right colors. 
and bringing that little arsenal you did, you chose perfectly. It matches all their wall decor. It matches that main, like that was our inspiration back exactly. there and you yeah. nailed it. I was, I tell you what, one of my first thoughts <laughs> is when I walked in the door was, I get to pour a super fun finish. How cool. Mm -hmm. That's really what the first thing I thought. Was. Right. It's gonna be super fun. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, it takes a specific customer to mm -hmm. request colors like this and they go perfectly for out here in Kauai. It's awesome. All right, so let me ask you the same thing. What was your first thought? So mine was, I felt a little nervous setting up Luke. Like Luke beat us out here, right? Yeah. He's only been on behind the camera. He's been a contractor, but never did countertops like this. So he's watching videos and, and talking to me on how to prep these. And he went above and beyond. He turned oh. that glossy surface into a nice, perfectly prepped substrate for us to get going to work. So that's what I was pumped about. And he also said, hey, Mitch, the dust route didn't work. It wasn't working with the grinder. So I'm like, oh boy, we're gonna be cleaning. But what he did was, is he made a nice tent right around the mm -hmm. kitchen. He contained that dust. When we walked in here, it was immaculately clean. I wasn't expecting to be cleaning for a minute before we started right. work. No, it was, it was perfect. So that was one of my concerns. The prep, when we walked in here, was amazing. Was. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Everything was ready. I was really excited. When I first came in, I was really excited about the challenge because of knowing that we're going over granite tile. Uh, and when I saw the size of that drop edge, being a three inch drop edge, opposed mm -hmm. to your standard one and a half. Yep. But, and then knowing the colors that you were going to use before seeing any sample boards, looking out that window and seeing the tropics, I get goosebumps just looking <laughs> at that. The colors out there and the colors in here, it just, yeah. So the challenge I was really excited about, and it, it, it was amazing watching you guys get all this put together. Really, really turned it, out nice. Okay. It wasn't just uh, you guys, you're a part of this. All of us working together, and that's where you gotta look at each job as an individual and be able to make an audible. And sure. that's where we put mm -hmm. that skim coat on there to help that epoxy flow on these extra beefy edges. So if you have beefy edges, it doesn't hurt. Even, you know, on MDF, if I'm making a giant rock face edge, I'm putting a skim coat on there because that makes that dirty pour really That made slow. a big that, difference. It really it was did. Big. I was, the, the quick set was new to me as far as the, the level quick mm -hmm. of putting that down. So that, that, was, that was the part that I was really excited about with you guys doing that because you've done it before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that difficult to do. And the way it, the way it turned out and the way it leveled uh, was amazing. And building that lava edge, mm -hmm. that was fun. My favorite part about this whole trip was the very first phone call that I got to come out here. I picked up the phone, the homeowner said, don't think I'm nuts, do you want to come to Hawaii? <laughs> Best line ever. Right. I'm glad I said yes. Awesome, yes. Yeah, we've had a good time and everything came together. That's, that was one thing that I enjoyed <laughs> is that everybody worked together and we overcame a bunch of mm -hmm. uh, obstacles obstacles really? that we had to, that we weren't thinking of. And right. we made it work in the time frame that we were here. We, right. we totally did, that's yeah. a good point. None of us anticipated, we knew we were heading into a high humidity environment, but not like 95% and raining. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and that was yeah. extreme. The, the fact that the four of us can sit and talk about it and come up yeah. with different ideas to come up with the right idea uh, to find that best practice to come up mm -hmm. with the best results. Yeah. And without a doubt that happened. This is, this is definitely uh, a trip that's going to go down in, uh, as one of the best, not only because we created and ended up with an amazing countertop, but we met some of the best homeowners mm. ever. We, we feel like these are going to be lifelong friends and uh, True. Without a doubt. <laughs> oh, Hannah. Oh, Hannah. Oh, Hannah. What, what is your honest, like, what are you feeling about this right now? Above and beyond unbelievable best experience with a total stranger who's now adopted. <laughs> They're not leaving. That's Sorry. right. That's right. You know that bedroom downstairs? Yours. Yeah, my name. I don't, you, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you find out about Rhonda and all this epoxy world? 
It was a crazy idea I had that I didn't want to rip out the counters. I thought it would be so much better to recycle and pour over as there has to be a way. And you are the first people I found. And I had COVID and Rhonda got me through. I kid you not, I watched awesome. 50 videos. And then I made that crazy phone call. Yes, <laughs> it was so worth it. All right. You've been amazing. Absolutely yes. amazing. It's been a Thank you for everything. pleasure. My amazing. family loves all of you. And this speaks for itself. It's the most beautiful countertops on the island. So come on over. So how long have you lived in Hawaii and what do you do for a living? Two years. I'm an executive coach, a podcaster, and I have a little radio show here on the island. Awesome. What's nice. your podcast channel? Where can they find your uh, channel? Yeah. Anywhere you hear your podcast, Apple, Spotify, and it's all called Work Life Harmonized because Work Life Balance is a myth. Work life harmonized? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Are you taking new clients? <laughs> I, I am. All right, all right. But only if you're burned out and you all are so energized, I don't think you need me. No. Burned out. This might have been a different story. <laughs> well, we are honored. We yeah. will take all this back with our heart for sure. Yeah. And I want to say, I think we put our heart into this. Yeah. Um, and it turned out just as beautiful as, as what I envisioned when we finally figured out what we were doing. I think to me, it, it really uh, came to fruition as far as going out and looking at your pool and checking out the scenery with the lava rock. Mm -hmm. I think the rock edge just really tied into everything that we were doing and the colors are just amazing. It's, Perfect. It's just really, Perfect. I'm really happy the way it turned out. I, yeah. I think it's one of the best um, color schemes we have done, um, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing. Beautiful. I agree with that. And like Dana said too, going over and recycling old countertops, keeping these out of the yeah. dump, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, a great cool idea. selling point yeah. or stone coat. And on top of that, no more grout joints oh. and no seams. If this was granite, you would have seams all over this. This is a really big kitchen. Yeah. It's double the size of your standard kitchen. And we were able to do this in what, four days? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's the manifestation and that's classic for the islands, right? Because it's what you dream you can become and here it is right in front of everybody's eyes. So mm -hmm. it's amazing you're able to document it for everyone. Good way to yeah. it. <laughs> All right, on that note, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and from Stone Coat Countertops, don't forget, you, you got, got this. this. And we'll see you on the next video.